Hello and welcome to another DP Kit tutorial. This one all came about because of a question on the New Tech forums for, uh, by a uh, member called Blindsided who wanted to basically animate an array of balls in various fashions as regard, uh, similar to what's in this video here. I'll post a link to this thread later on in the comments so you can actually look at the, um, the actual animation he's talking about. Basically what it is is distorting these balls in, in various ways uh, depending on to simulate the sound of a speaker and things like that. Okay, right, well, even though uh, Blindsided did have an object to download, I've actually created another quick one with much lower geometry just for the sake of this tutorial because it's much faster to work with while I'm demonstrating things. Uh, his, his model was a bit heavy because it was subdivided and had morphs and all that sort of stuff in it, but so I just basically got rid of it and created my own quick, quick model. Right, let's get started. As always, first thing to do, got the level... Open Properties, go to Edit Nodes. Right, usual stuff. Let's start off with a DP Kit Part Move. Uh, part Move, Bosch, plug it into there. Delta into there. And we only actually want to move it in one direction on the Y, up and down, these balls. You could do other ways as well, but this is where we're going to do it for the time being, just to keep it nice and simple. And so obviously we need to split the vector uh, we need to make a vector that we can plug in to move. So again, use the search if you don't know where things are. Make vector, plug that in to move. And we want an overall control of the amount of displacement, so we'll also add a multiply node. So go to maths, multiply, and plug that into the Y. And we'll just leave this set at 1 for the moment. Right, this is going to be our standard stock setup. We're not going to change anything with these. So basically what I'm going to do is just uh, grab them and shuffle them over a bit because we don't need to see them. I want to make as much space as we can. Right, there are various ways of uh, doing this. So let's start off with a really simple way of displacing these balls using a gradient. So what we'll do is just grab a 3D texture, say something, ooh, let's go for turbulence, that's always a good start. And what we want to do is plug that into the multiply node, and you can see we've already got some displacement there. It's a bit hard to actually see what we're doing here, so a little technique for if you want to just see how big a texture is and what it's doing, just grab it, edit copy and we'll just close this for the moment and go to the surface editor paste and we'll plug it into color and open up VPR and you can see there we've got a texture and you can see it's displacing it by the brighter ones are actually moved up higher than the darker ones but that's a bit uh, small a bit complicated a bit busy so We'll just upsize it a bit, and that gives us a bit more of an even tech, a bit more of a texture we can use in this appropriate. Obviously, you could sit here and play with all these sort of things for artistic things, but I won't bother with this one. Simply quick, make it quick and make it simple. But I guess you can play with those all the time. So we know that works. I could paste and copy that, but it's easiest just to go back, uh, close the surface editor. As I didn't change that much, we can just go back in here and change these. So now, as you can see, we've got our displacement there and click on multiply, so it changes that to three. And you can see we've got a nice little displacement there, right. Okay, how do we animate that? Well, the easiest thing is just to drive the texture. As we always do with animated textures, we need to just drive the position uh, to, make, to make it move. So what we need to do, go down to DBNW, get uh, additional, get time info, and we need another, uh, another make vector so we can split it up in just because we just want it to move in one direction we just want it to move in y otherwise it'll look like the ripples of course you can actually have it moving any way you want but if we just do it with the y for the moment and as you can see we'll just go back to shaded solid because we don't really need to see what's see what's happening there tweak that up a bit so we can see the timeline and you can see we've got some nice animated wobbling balls and as I say you could 
change that into any of these if you wanted say a different slightly different approach so the ripple actually moving across the object or whatever there's lots of options for doing it things but i'll just leave it in the y because i just want the, the displacement to actually change rather than seem to move so there we go there's a simple way of getting an object to be animated or lots of objects to be animated using dp kit right so we'll minimize all this and unplug it and we'll just move it out of the way because so we're going on to the next one now okay another way of moving these animated things is actually to use a gradient to shift them up in a, or move them in a certain direction so to do that we'll first of all add a gradient uh, there we go And what we need to do is actually set the start and the end for appropriate places on this. So I can see I've got a five meter grid, so and I've got five meters there, 10 meters, so 20 meters. So I would normally go from minus 10 to plus 10, but because I want a little bit of extra space either side, just to get my effects to work properly, I'm actually going to go from minus 12 to plus 12. Okay. So, next thing we need to do, we need to add a couple more keyframes. There we've got one there. So, three keyframes. Uh, I think I'll actually... Let's get the see if they come up in the right order. So, first one, show output. Second one, show output. Third one, show output. And we'll also change that one to white. Okay. So... If we plug that straight into the uh, into our multiply node, you can see we get a ripple. And as I move these around, you can see it actually changes the shape of the ripple, which is exactly what we want. But we want to get this animated. So how do we do that? Well, easiest way is just to control the position of these keys with various mathematical nodes. Actually, sounds quite complicated, but it's really quite simple. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the um, math nodes and do a couple of ads. And I also need an amount that I'm actually going to offset either the gradients either side of the center by. So I need a scalar constant. Right, so how do we wire these up? Well, basically, we can take the initial number, we'll come into the... Uh, no, so. Okay, so how do we wire these up? Well, the first thing we need is we need something that will actually make the animation move. So again, we'll go for another time info. I'm keeping these in, in groups so you can actually see how they work. Uh, more easily so we use our time info info to drive the position of the first key then we want to add that with our constant to drive the position of the second key then we use that and our constant to drive the position of the third key and now you can see we've got our keys set up so if you go to the spy node you can actually see the first one is, let's knock that down to zero as you can see input there is come on input there is zero input there is one input there is two right but that's not actually driving the whole distance of our object so what we need to do is actually subtract from this that distance there so it actually the ripple starts all the way across because at the moment as you can see it only goes from the center out so let's go to maths sorry i'm british not american so i say maths rather than math and do a subtract node wherever we are uh, so if we plumb this in here and this in there and that into there neatness 
a bit so you can see the way the flow works. And let's say we want to subtract 12, so it starts right at the beginning. OK, and now if we move the slide, you can see we've got a ripple happening. But it doesn't get very far. So the easiest way of changing that is to add a multiply node just to speed up the rate at which everything changes. So we'll plug a multiply in there, multiply in there, and let's oh, run number off the top of my head, five. And obviously you can change these to get any artistic effect you want. But now we've got a nice little ripple that moves across and we can change the width of the ripple by altering this. So you get a wider effect, and obviously we've got the multiplier, so we can change the height of the rip, the height of the displacement there. So there we go. We've got a nice little ripple effect that moves from side to side. Okay, well, one of the other effects in the video was a ripple that went from the middle to the outside. So how do we do that? Well, we can use this, we can use this network to add something different to it. And what we need to do is actually change the input because at the moment the input is just set to X coordinate. What we need to do is make it as an input from the inside and to the outside. OK, if you've seen my texturing video when I made a cake, you will know exactly how we're going to do this. But the first bit to do is get DP kit again and we want a part info to give us the information as to where of each of these individual balls is. Right, and now we need to actually split this up because what we did, if we just, you could just use a distance node. That actually works in X, Y, Z. We don't want it to work in X, Y, Z. All we want to do is work in X and Z. We don't, we want to ignore the Y because that's not a degree of freedom in our animation. So do that. Let's go to vector oh let's spell it right and we want to uh, split vector so we can just get our x and our z and then we want to make a vector uh, wherever it's gone there we go so now if we plug in the position there oops split out the x and the z Plug that into distance, and with the distance node, because there's nothing actually going into there, so it's going to automatically make it zero zero zero. Obviously, if our texture was offset or our object was offset, we might need to put in another position, say the world position of the object or something like that, to um, to actually get the centre of the effect that we want to do. But for the time being, we can just plug that then into input, and now we can see we've got a nice little ripple going out. Obviously, we've got the offsets there that we could play with to get it back to happen when we wanted we wanted everything to move. But as you see, now nice ripple from the inside to the outside. OK, so now that's three ways we've got of animating things. And it's not over yet. I'm going to show you another one. So unplug that, minimize that, get that out of the way. And we might even get to a fourth, depending on how quickly we get a time. So. All right, next thing we can do, we can actually animate this with textures. We've seen, but we can also use images. So if we go to an image node, let 2D image, uh, into there, image, load image, uh, bum, bum, bum. I must get a faster hard disk. So we'll start off with zero. Okay, and we'll load another image. And we'll make that one. Right, with these, first thing we need to obviously bear in mind is, whoops, let's get that back. Is we need to have them in the Y direction, because obviously they're firing down. We'll go to that and we'll change that to Y as well. And we need to have them set the size of the thing across. We could do that mathematically, but it's easy just to use automatic sizing. Uh, 
Okay, so now if we say plug that into there, we now get an offset of the image. And if we plug that one into there, we now get another offset. But you can see that at the moment they're going the wrong way around. Uh, and how do we change that? Well, at the minute, go to invert, and it doesn't actually do anything with the PNG files I'm using in the, the current version of Lightwave, Mac Lightwave. So that doesn't work. So we, the easiest thing to do is we can just multiply them by minus one. So again, go to maths, uh, multiply, plug that into there. And run that into our thing. And then now we see, you can see we've got our number one sticking above the object. Right, so suppose we wanted to change between those over the course of the animation. How do we do that? Well, we can use a gradient node. So let's get the gradient and gradient node. And we need two keys. So we've got one show output, two show output. And we'll set this for the time of our thing. So I'm 150, I'm at 25 frames per second being in the UK. So we'll set that to six seconds. So there we go. We've got our two numbers. And we plug the uh, gradient output into there. We'll plug the first one into color there. Plug the second one into that colour there. And to actually animate it, we'll just drive the input by time. So we'll just grab another time info. Paste. And we're working on time rather than frame. So we'll plug that into the input. And now, as you can see, it starts off and moves between the... Oops. Let's just... I forgot to add a key there with a zero. So let's just add a key there and we'll make that black. So let's start off as flat. And as we fade it in, it goes to the number one and then it cross fades the zero, which is a little bit size. We'll probably size that down a bit just to make it look neat. And then if we want to, we can just add another key at the end and then again make that black. And then it fades back to black again. So there we go. That's how you can do that sort of animation. And just as a little bonus, I like to uh, unplug that and move that up there. That's a little bonus. Here's something I made earlier, which I'll just show you. Let's just grab these. This is just a static look that we can use. And I've just set a gradient. It's basically the same functions as we've got in here to give us a radial output from the center. And I've set up a gradient with a few keys. Nothing complicated there. And if we plug that into a multiply result, we actually get The shape of a loudspeaker cone and you could fade between that and any of the others using gradients like I've showed you here so you could have a gradient there so start off with them in that shape or you could just add so for instance we could uh, stick in an add node uh, uh, add and take this displacement, add it to that displacement, and then as you can see, we've got balls dancing around the image of a speaker cone. And there you go. Hope you found this interesting and useful, and um, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you very much.